World Wide Web adds up to an excellent resource for maths teachers. But which websites are the best? We went to Henry Court Community College in Hampshire and asked the staff that question. And they recommended one for each finger and both thumbs. At number 10, it's a site that gets up and gets down with a fun and physical approach to maths. Scott Kim Puzzler. We liked it, even though it is a simple site. We actually liked some of the concepts and ideas in there. Um, there's some kinesthetic type of lessons, which actually we, don't, we find quite difficult in maths to get involved in. Um, things like how to do handshakes and the puzzles with the handshakes. And there's some dance maths, which we never looked at, and how to create a class to do symmetrical puzzles by getting them to stand up and move around. But we like the fact they could go on the computers and actually use the puzzles on the computers. There's a downloadable game section, um, which are brain teasers or mental workouts, as they call them, um, which they can go on the computers and use, and they got quite a lot out of them. Games can be a waste of time on websites. But at the same time, it's something that children really enjoy and they're really motivated for, for using them. So they, they will use their logic, they use all sorts of aspects of maths without really realising that they're learning at the same time. So games are an excellent tool. Some sites are more focused on getting academic results. We calculated maths revision to be our number nine. It's a really good site for the children that think, help, I've forgotten how to do that. Uh, they can go, they can put in the topic that they need. It comes up with a nice, clear, short explanation of what it's about. It's got some examples so that they can look through the examples. They can even print it out if they want to. It is a very simple site, but it is very easy to navigate. It does have a list down the side of algebra, number, shape and space, split into topics that they can click on and it gives them quite comprehensive notes. There are worked exam answers and worked, exam and worked questions uh, that they can work through and see how they should come out with the correct answer, along with notes that develop the ideas that they, they put forward. So it's not just questions, it's actually explanations as well as the questions, which is quite important. A significant fraction of our top 10 are resources for teachers. At number eight, we got caught up in TeacherNet. TeacherNet is a government site um, and it basically provides links to other government sites such as the DFES standard site which is obviously a, another useful site. It also links to the National Numeracy Strategy but it does also have downloadable and accessible lesson plans and resources. It's a very easy to use site um, and it, like I say it does link a lot of the sites together so it saves you having to trawl through. Um, it keeps it up to date as well, so it does say latest news on it. So instead of you having to trawl through a lot of websites to find it, it will say latest news on this particular site. And it allows you as a math teacher, and particularly as a head of department, to see exactly what's going on. It does have some very, very good video case studies that you can actually look at. Particularly the one I've looked at is the maths and ICT, the combining of the two, which interests me and interests our department. And there are some really good video clips on there that you can download and watch. Teachers and students alike can enjoy the highly visual problem page from Utah State University at number seven. The National Library of Virtual Manipulatives is, uh, first of all, it's, it's quite confusing because of the word manipulative. So we prefer to say it's perhaps a pop-up, an interactive game, something that you can manipulate in order to aid to help your teaching. Also a useful site for pupils as well. I'd be happy to leave uh, pupils on the site um, and say, have a go at these games, have a go on these puzzles. And the puzzles is, is important as well, to get them thinking a bit more. You've got number, algebra, shape and space, hand in data, probability. So the same sort of system that the National Framework has. It's really simple. As soon as you click on the icon, it pops up straight away. Uh, it's nice and colourful. Um, and we can use it to help illustrate our teaching. What's at number six? The solution is puzzles.com. The puzzle.com website is a really good one for starters. Now, I'm all for starters. It gets, gets the children into uh, the maths 
that you, you want them to. These, these starters can be used on the interactive whiteboard. You could use them on individual computers. One of the good things about puzzles is that they do almost differentiate by outcome. So you can push students on who need to be pushed on by the puzzle itself. Putting them in perhaps in pairs where they're discussing and arguing the case uh, is a vital way of, of thinking about mathematics and using mathematics. And puzzles do do that where they can argue amongst each other or disagree with each other of how to solve particular puzzles and actually look at different ways of thinking about it. We are 50% through our top 10 websites for maths teachers. Stand up and be counted if you like our selection at number 5. Census at School is a fantastic site for developing statistical uh, analysis and collecting of data as well. Students can log on the website and answer a questionnaire and on there there's about 20 or 25 questions that they have to answer and all the time they're developing their own hypotheses which is quite important. So literally they would do the questionnaire one week and two days later you've got the data back in your hand with another school's data. Um, so they're comparing themselves against somewhere up in Nottingham or Northampton or even somewhere halfway across the world, which I think is, is an amazing thing to do. And of course it's relevant, and I think a lot of the data we use is not necessarily relevant when we look at statistics. This is relevant because they've done it themselves, they've collected it themselves, and it's them that they are actually analysing. At four is a delicious all-round resource for students from the BBC. Bite Size is a, is a great site. It, it obviously has comprehensive revision notes for them to use, but it's done in a, in a very kiddie, student-friendly kind of way. You know, it does need to be pushed on a little bit more, it, and they can use it a lot more, I think. There, there is an element of, perhaps now we need to go into looking at using it for interactive teaching, um, but I do think Bite Size is very good at what it does. It does have the, the critical areas that they need to cover. It does it in a very student-friendly student, student -friendly way. It does have games, which actually does appeal to students and they, they don't realise they're playing games and revising at the same time, and they really enjoy using it. Alice Cooper sang that school was out. Our teachers politely disagree. School's in at number three. I would direct a pupil towards an interactive tutorial after perhaps I've taught a topic or perhaps even before I've taught a topic has about you go into the school website, um, have a look at Shape and Space or Algebra, download a particular tutorial, go through it because it's so simple, they've just got the key points, um, what the learning objectives are, they have a little test, how well you've done and they summarise again. So it's really easy, useful for a pupil to see how well they know a particular topic and it only takes about two or three minutes to go through the tutorial so they could be happy that they know about that topic. I think it's important students understand when they've got something right and know when they've got something right and know when they've understood a concept. Uh, um, you know, getting the answer right is, is quite a satisfying thing and they can obviously see that straight away. If they don't have that particular concept right or the idea or the question correct, it guides them in the right way. These hints should help you to remember the name of each polygon. The way it delivers it is really colourful, simple and audio as well, which is uh, something a little bit different, which is something that a lot of the websites don't have and it? it's quite a quirky thing, a little bit of an audio tape. And, um, so I think it's something a little bit different that a lot of websites out there don't deliver and it is school. At number two, it's Plymouth University's Centre for Innovation in Maths Teaching. A two-way resource that learns from the people who learn from it. CIMT is a fantastic website. I've been using it now for four years when I was introduced to it. And you just love it. I, I love it. Um, I just go to that if I need a particular guide or help with anything at all across the whole curriculum. It's got resources coming out of its ears. It co covers every ability range. We've looked at it sort of from primary right the way through to A-level. I think it's good to get an understanding of where maths starts from and where it goes towards, and it's a good resource for doing that. We can use it for diagnostic testing as well. They, as a research-based website, take all the data from the interactive tutorials, from the diagnostic testing, to help them and the government and us as schools 
and to progress with our learning. Someone does our job for us and says, we believe you know, this person is gonna get a level five based on the test that you've given them. So it, it helps us as teachers for teacher assessment. The resources, the OHPs are excellent, just so you have it up as a guide to, to help your teaching and the worksheets we're talking 50, 60 pages of worksheets with answers, every teacher's dream. If you're stuck, you go to that website and it will help you out, guaranteed. Before we get to our number one, let's tot up 10 down to two. At 10, Scott Kin puzzle. At nine, maths revision. Eight, TeacherNet. At seven, the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives. Six, Puzzles.com. At five, Census at School. At four, BBC Bite Size. Three, School. At two, the Centre for Innovation in Maths Teaching. So what did the staff of Henry Court Community College recommend as the number one website for maths teachers? It's the all-round usability of MyMaths. MyMaths is the complete website, both for teaching, both for learning, and as a resource for, for staff and students. Um, it is a subscription service, so you do have to pay but it does contain worksheets that have been sent in by teachers, so it's obviously worksheets that have been used in the classroom that they found successful. It has interactive tutorials that students can log on to and go through the tutorials. It keeps a record of the tutorials they have done uh, and gives them a score of what they've done based on a traffic light system. It does contain a section that uh, includes D to C boosters, which is obviously very important to try and get up to that C. It also contains a section boosting A's to A stars. So, and it's very concentrated on particular subject areas. And we started using the site three years ago and it's changed dramatically over those three years. Uh, it started off almost very basic and then it became a subscription site and from there it just hasn't stopped. Um, it now contains interactive lessons that you can use on the whiteboard um, and it displays things on the whiteboard that you can work through with a class but of course they can also log on at home and see it at home and work it through again in their own time. The interactive uh, tests are actually really good for a teacher. We've said it as homework before. Obviously it's then marked and they, they've got the instant marking as well so they've seen how well they've done but you can analyse the class results very quickly by looking down at the traffic lights. So you may set a, a, a test on algebra for example. You'll be able to scan through and see actually they haven't understood certain concepts of that algebra that you will then come into the lesson having seen what homework they've done and know what to teach them for the next lesson. So it's a very up-to-date and a very easy way of gauging students' ability. Well, I hope that summed everything up nicely. You can find all the sites mentioned in this programme and more on our site at teachers.tv. Happy clicking.